and welcome to this special festive Christmas episode of uh, this first look exploring session of Narcissus, a Twelfth Night Merriment uh, performed in Twelfth Night um, of what we would call 1602. The uh, modern people would call it 1603 because somehow they think the year changes in, in the new year. But no, it doesn't change till March. So it's still 1602 as far as we're concerned. Uh, it's Twelfth Night. Uh, it is an entertainment performed at St John's College, Oxford in January. And um, it is possibly incredibly self-indulgent. Um, just as a, a general warning here of this kind of thing. This is going to be full of in-jokes. It's going to be full of Latin that we won't understand. Uh, it's going to be full of uh, references to things that we won't have a, a clue about. Um, but which will be very interesting, I'm sure, once we actually unpick it further down the line. Um, so it was performed on a Thursday, Thursday the 6th of January. Um, it was after some supper. We've all had a jolly good meal. Um, and goodness only knows how late it is as well. Some of these evening entertainments, you know, they don't get started for ages and they'll happily finish the next day. So uh, goodness only knows how long uh, into the, the, the evening this went. Uh, the cast includes uh, one Francis Clark, uh, who uh, plays the porter. So uh, one of our, our company gets to be B. Francis Clark, uh, who's basically um, doing, uh, referring to himself all the time. Uh, in the audience, we have a Ralph Hutchinson uh, and, uh, and uh, presumably his wife, uh, Mrs. Mary Hutchinson. Uh, and uh, So uh, we know they're in the building, uh, along with presumably a lot of rowdy um, uh, students at St John's College. So um, that's the text we're doing for this special festive Christmas special, um, which will be released sometime during Christmas. I I don't know. It'll be uh, probably released both on the podcast and the YouTube channel simultaneously. Yes, mm. you know, a simulcast release um, to uh, try and join the two halves of things. If you like listening to this or watching this kind of uh, play reading or uh, sort of play uh, reading, uh, then uh, you can always sign up for our readings. All of these sessions are free online uh, to join. We do them on Zoom. Uh, we have several sessions a week, uh, sometimes several sessions a day, uh, or all sorts of different times. Uh, you can be one of us if you want to be, um, or you can just continue enjoying the content from afar. Reading today, uh, the part originally essayed by Francis, reading Porter as well as Dorastus, and reading some post-show speeches is... Bryony Sparrow, actor in Lincolnshire. Uh, reading uh, Primus, Sophistus, uh, Clinias, and uh, 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 a letter, in fact, a uh, post-show letter is... Hi, I'm Aragon. I am a letter all the time. Uh, reading Secundus, Tiresias, and Chloris is... Hi, Alan Scott, and I'm already confused. Reading Tertius, Lyriope, Florida, uh, Echo, and also one of the post-show speeches is... Sarah Blake, actor, writer, and director in Germany. And uh, reading the prologue, Narcissus, uh, someone who we've labelled One with Bucket, as well as some post-show speeching, is... <laughs> Hello, I'm Emma Kemp. I'm an actor based in London. Yes, there's some bucket action coming up later on. If the, if we didn't, if that wasn't, if anything I said earlier wasn't enough to get you on board, then the the appearance of a bucket uh, definitely will. I'm your host Robert Crichton. I'll be reading stage directions and also I could uh, do a, a little bit of text as well. Uh, so we begin pre-show with some sort of induction sequence. For indeed, uh, we've all had a lovely supper. And at enter the porter at the end of the supper. Master and mistress with all your guests, God save you herein the matter rests. Christmas is now at the point to be passed. Tis giving up ghost, tis giving up the ghost, and this is the last. And shall it pass thus without life or cheer? This hath not been seen this hath not been seen this many a year. If you'll have any sport, then say the word. Here come youth of the parish that it that will it afford. There they are here, hard by coming along, crowning their wassail bowl with a song. 
they have some other sport too out of doubt let me alone and i will find it out i am your porter and your vassal i shall shall i let in the boys with their wassail say they're at the door to sing they begin go then i'll go and let them in enter the wassail two of them bearing the bowl and singing the song and all of them bearing the burden Gentiles all, both great and small, sit close in the hall and make some room, for amongst you here at the end of your cheer, with our country bear, we are bold to come. Here's then a full carouse, let it go about the house, while we do carry it thus, tis no great labour. Heave it up merrily, let care and anger fly, a pin for poverty, drink to your neighbour. Those that are wise do know that with spice God back us his juice is wholesome and good. It comforts age, it refresheth the sage, it rebateth rage, and cheereth the blood. Then here, here's then a full carouse, let it go about the house. Take it with quickness, tis physic for sickness, it driveth the thickness of care from the heart, the veins that are empty. Tea, it filleth with plenty, not one among twenty, but it easeth of smart. Are you sad for fortune bad, and would be glad as ever you were, if that a quaff do not make you loff? Then with a staff drive me out of door. To tell you his merits, good thoughts it inherits, it raiseth the spirits and quickens the wit, the peoples the veins, it scoureth the reins, it purgeth the brains, and makes all things fit. It makes a man bold, it keeps out the cold, he hath all things twice told unto his comfort. He stands in the middle, the world, hey, derry diddle, goes round without a fiddle to make them a sport. Here's then a full carouse. Let it go about the house, while we do carry it thus, tis no great labour. Why, well said, my lads of metal, this is somewhat yet, tis trimly done, but what sport, what merriment, all dead, no virtue extent? Ah, uh, pray, sir, get our good mistress to bestow something on us and we are gone. Talk of that tempore venturo, there's no going to any other houses now. Your bowl is at the bottom, and that which is left is for me. Hey, good Master Porter. Come, come. Dance as a Morris, or else go sell fish. I'll, I warrant you'll make as good a night of it here as if you had been at all the houses in the town. Nay, pray let's go. We can do nothing. No. What was that I took you all a-gabbling together? I, well, what was that I took you all a gabbling to the t'other day in Mother Bunch's backside by the well there, when Tom at Hobbs ran under the hovel with a kettle on his head? Why, you would not have a play, would you? Oh, by all means, tis your only fine course. About it, lads, have a stamp. I warrant you a reward sufficient. I tell you, my little wind suckers, had not a certain melancholy engendered with a nipping dolor overshadowed the sunshine of my mirth, I had been a pre-secor, one of your consorts. Where's Goody Hubbard's son? I saw him in his mother's holiday clothes in Al. Do you hear, Master Porter? We have pitiful nails in our shoes. You had best lay something on the ground. Else we shall make abominable scars in the face on it. Rem tenors. Well, we'll think on it. It is a most condolent tragedy we shall move. Dictum puta, satis est quod suffocat. I faith, I tickle them for a good voice. Suffi sufficiente quantitate. A word is enough to the wise. You have no buttered beer in the house, have you? No, no, trudge. Some of the guests are won the point to be gone. Have you ever a gentlewoman's picture in the house, or no? Why? If you do, if you have, do but hang it yonder, yonder, and twill me, make me act in coney. Well then, about, away about your gear. And they exit. Let's just pause there to take stock. Um, there's 
there, there, there does seem to be references to something or some entertainment or something. Uh, gabbling t'other day at Mother Bunch's backside by the world there. It, it does feel like that's referencing a show that was on, you know, they organised a while back, uh, of which we know nothing. It, do, it feels self-referential. I, I could be missing the point there. Obviously, it's got subtle jokes like uh, Mother Bunch's backside by the, you know, I, I, I don't think we're missing something there in terms of what that's alluding to. Um... But we've got this lovely wassail song uh, as they hand round the bowl and, and sing. And uh, that was really fun to do. And, and there were some lovely bits in that. We've got audience participation. Um, shall I let the boys in with their wassail? I'm sorry, that's clearly an ask, uh, asking the audience for, for a response there. Um, there's a lot of little bits where I'm sort of going, OK, I, I think I know pretty much where the Latin is going for a lot of this, but... Um, it is the kind of thing I'm just going, OK, yes, should double check some of that. Um, um, but it's not getting too much in the way. Um, but, yeah, thoughts from the room about this <laughs> uh, this moderately self-indulgent entertainment so far. <laughs> Any thoughts? Eric? I'm particularly fond of the vocabulary of the porter. He's like, let you know, let me tell you by wind, little wind suckers <laughs> or just just things like things like that sort of. I know you were a gabbling the other day, and so on and so forth. Or I don't know it just feels very um, fun and conversational, and totally not like what we've been <laughs> reading. Yeah, I mean that that whole sentence. I mean, wind suckers we've had somewhere else. I don't know if it's later or, or earlier. I can't remember. I'm sure we've had that before. But uh, I like, you know, just the I had not a certain melancholy engendered with a nipping dollar overshadowing, overshadowed the sunshine of my mirth. I mean, this porter has got one hell of a way of talking and he's the one dropping all the Latin as well. Um, uh, obviously, he's porter to a, uh, a college, so you would sort of expect that. And he's sort of talking about all the boys being uh, not necessarily of the college as well, that they're outsiders which is kind of the point of this kind of entertainment, that they're outsiders. Whether they literally are outsiders or whether they're just pretending to be outsiders and is a, perhaps a moot point. Uh, Alan? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is that the porter, I think you said, was in fact the author of the piece or potentially the author of the piece. It almost feels like a posh chap try, trying to um, do what he thinks a porter ought to be doing. Um, I mean, there's some lovely constructions in there. There's also some words which I'm not sure whether they're artefacts in the uh, way that the thing has come down to us, which don't quite make sense, which maybe need a bit more tidying up. Hmm. I mean, the, the last line I had, make me act in Coney, was how I read it, but I can't... That That's the nearest I could see to what it's got printed but i'm not sure the context no uh, i have to say i didn't either i just left it as writ because I, I didn't want to accidentally modernize it into mm. out of its actual meaning so i'm, I'm not 100 percent certain there um eric my question was basically they, they've come in from the call they've done their drinking and all that's left is basically enough for the porter and he's going you can't go anywhere else you've drunk my wine <laughs> so you have to stay and sort of uh perform in in uh they call it in in return um but um I, I do like the bit you don't want a play you mad person how dare you ask for a play of all things well it's it's it's, it's a bit of an imposition because you know all they're all they yeah you're right all they're really there to do is turn up offer some good cheer offer some wine um, and then move on to the next place and do the same and maybe get a, a few coins and then go. And he's going, no, hang on, that's not good enough. We want to play as well. And he's going, hang on, we haven't brought a play. We haven't got anything. No, no, I heard you the other day. You were talking about doing a thing. Um, you, said, you can do it. Come on. Five minutes. Off you go. Um, which is sort of the conceit of it all, that they haven't rehearsed and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, Eric? It's yeah, it is kind of like they've turned up at the door singing jingle bells, and he's like, "Come, tell us a play." Well, except obviously they're they're old enough to drink in this context. Um, we hope. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it, I just love the intro. There, there is no meaningful division as to when you can drink in, in those days. Everybody drank uh, from pretty much from the cradle. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, well, let's move on. Uh, we, having had all of this introduction, as it were, we now get 
a prologue. Enter the prologue. We are no vagabonds. We are no arrant rogues that do run with plays about the country. Our play is good. And I dare father warrant it will make you more sport than cat in plum tree. We are no saucy common playing skipjacks, but town born lads, the king's own lovely subjects. This is the night, night latest of the twelve. Now give us leave for to be blithe and frolic. Tomorrow we must fall to dig and delve. We'll be but short. Long sitting breeds the colic. Then we begin and let none hope to hiss us. Boo May we hiss, play boo is of its own hiss. Narcissus. Sorry, say that last line again. I, I apologise. <laughs> the play we play is of its own Narcissus. And what we're, I'm calling scene one, scene ver uh, divisions will vary depending on your point of view. Uh, Cephisus, uh, Lyriope and Narcissus are in this scene. Open thine ears, my son. Open, I bid, to hear the sound so which, which the sage shall read. I mean the sage Tiresias, my duck, which are, I, shall they ope to thee thy lot, thy luck. My father, I, says that brave river who is all water, do like water shiver, as any man of judgment may describe by face, hands washed in bowl, thy father, I. And I, thy mother nymph, as may be seen by colours that I wear, blue, white, and green. For nymphs are the colour of the sea, and sea is right of colour truly green, and blue, and white. Would you know how, I pray? Billows are blue, water is green, and foam is white of hue. We both bid thee, Narcissus, our dearest child, with countenance sober, modest looks, and mild, to prophet's wisest words with tension hearken. But sun is gone, and welcome begins to hearken. Vulcan the weary horses is a shoeing, while Phoebus with Queen Thetis is a doing. Prophet comes not, let's go both all in and all in some. We may go home like fo fools as we did come. Oh, stay, dear husband. Flow not away, bright water. The prophet will come by sooner or later. Why well, stand we here as it, as it were caps are thrumming to look for prophet? Prophet is not coming. Sweet running river, which suffices height, whose water is so clear, whose waves so bright, Gold is thy sand, and crystal is thy current, thy brook so clear that no vile wind dare stir it. Thou art my father, and thou, sweetest nymph, thou art my mother, I, thy son, thy shrimp. Agree you in one point, to go or tarry, Narcissus must obey, I, must he marry. Gush, water, gush, run, river, from thy channel, thou hast a son more loving than a spaniel. With watery eyes I see how it is expedient to have a son so wise and so obedient. Most beauteous son, yet indeed not so beautiful as thou art mannerly and dutiful. See, husband, see, oh, see where prophet blind in twice good time is coming here behind. Oh, here he is, and now he's come nigh us, lie close, good wife and son, at least he is by us. Enter Tiresias. All you that see me here in Bishop's Rocher, I see not, your heads may run on crochet. For aught I know, to know what manner white, in this strange guise I am, or how I hight, I am Tiresias, the not-seeing prophet. Blind though I be, pray let no man scoff it. For blind I am, yea, blind as any beetle, and cannot see a whit, no, ne'er so little. Here are no eyes, why, they're in my mind, whereby I see the fortunes of mankind. Who made me blind? Jove? I may say to you, no. But it was Jove's wife and his sister Juno. Juno and Jove fell out, both biggest gods, and I was he to up the merry odds. You know it all, I'm sure it is somewhat common, and how besides seven years I was a woman, which if you know, you do know all my state. Come on, I'll fold the fortune of your fate. Trembling Tiresias, 
I pray you cease to travel and rest a little on the groundy gravel. Who is calls? Speak, for I cannot see. We're friends, sir, to the number of some three. What would you have? Why, sir, this is the matter. <clears throat> to be plain with you and not to flatter, I am the stately river height suffis, uh, smoother than glass and softer than ice. This nymph before you here, whom you do see, is my own wife, I clipped Glariope. With, though with the daub of praise I am loath to loam her, this I assure you the blind poet Homer saw not the like amongst his nymphs and goddesses, nor in his Iliads, no, nor in his goddesses. Think not, I pray, that we are come for naught. Our lovely infant have we brought, have we to you brought. The purple hue of this, our jolly stripling, I would not have you think was got with tippling. He is our son, Narcissus, our no common violet, nature in grain hath dyed his face in scarlet. Speak. Then I pray you speak, for we you portune that you would tell our son fact son his fortune. Do not shrink back, Narcissus. Come and stand. Hold up and let the blind man see thy hand. Come, my young son, hold up and catch audacity. I see thy hand with the eyes of my capacity. Now I speak riddles, think not I am tipsy, but what I speak, I learned it of a gypsy. Though I speak hard words of curamastic, do not, I pray, suppose that I am frantic. The table of thy hand is somewhat ragged. Thy mental line is too direct and cragged. Thy line of life, my son, is too, too brief. And crosseth Venus' girdle here in chief. And here, O doleful sign, is overthwart. In Venus' mount, a little prick or wart. Besides here, in the hillock of the great Jupiter, Monsieur Lemours lies lurking like a sheep fighter. What can I make out of this hard construction but doleful dumps, decay, death, and destruction? O oh, furious fates, O oh, three thread thrumming sisters, O oh, fickle fortune, thou, thou art the mistress of this mishap. Why am I longer liver? Run, river, run, and drown thee in the river. Since this to thee, my son, I do pronounce ill. It shall behove thee for to take good counsel, and that if soon. Wisdom, they say, is good. Your parents, Ambo, have done what they could. They can but bring horse to the water brink. But horse may choose whether that horse will drink. Oh, say, thou holy priest of high Apollo, what harm, what hurt, what change, what chance will follow? That if we may provide a plant, that if we can, we may provide a plaster of wholesome herbs to cure this dire disaster. I should tell you, you amiss would judge it. I have one salve, one medicine in my budget. And that is this, since you will have me tell, if he himself do never know, farewell. And exit Tiresias. Mary, come out. Is his old noddle doting? Here is an old said saw well worth the noting. Will he not know himself? Who shall he then? My boy shall know himself from other men. Aye, and my boy shall live until he die, in spite of profit and in spite of pie. It is an old saw that it is too late when steed is stolen to shut the stable gate. Therefore take heed. Yet I bethink at Delph on Phoebus' walls is written, Know thyself. Shall he not know himself, and so be laughed on, when as Apollo cries, Noti seaton? And exuant. Well, this is um, this is subtle verse, um, written written with uh, the intent to to move uh, the audience. Um, yeah, there's some fun rhyming going on here. Um, it's full on uh, opening scene of Panto with uh, with fairy fairy godmothers uh, sort of duelling it out, isn't it? It's um, it's that kind of verse. Um, um, yes, gush water gush, run river from thy channel. Thou hast a son more loving than a spaniel. Um, I mean, <laughs> subtle, it's not. <laughs> 
Um, and some of these rhymes do just seem to be just just for the sake of rhyming. Uh, it's like let, let's just back for infill the rest of that sentence to hit the rhymes. Uh, thoughts from the room. I mean, it's broadly speaking, uh, following some 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 proper proper mythology. Um, throw them all together, though, uh, Eric. Uh, well, because Sarah asked this in the chat, and I'm sure people will have the same question uh, at home. Um, not, the last bit where uh, when is Apollo cries, Gnosi Seafton, it means Gnosi Seafton, which means like sort of uh, know thyself, no. no like literally in classical Greek, um, it's I think um, Socrates, if I remember correctly. But I mean, maybe know thyself, therefore before knowing others, kind of thing. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so it, it it's 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 explicated in the line before rather than often with Latin in the line after. Um, uh, Branny, it's jolly good for something they've just thrown together and been begged to put on almost on the spur of the moment, isn't it? Yeah, you'd almost think that that was a conceit and it wasn't true. Uh, <laughs> oh, this old thing, we just had it lying around, you know. Oh, f f uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's fun, it really, but it's, it's interesting that actually it's not as self-indulgent as I was expecting it. Yes, it's very silly and it's... Um, um, uh, you know, and all that, but it is just actually telling us a story um, and so far, and it's telling us... You know, I I don't recall Tiresias popping into the uh, the opening of Narcissus, but maybe he did. I can't remember. But who cares? You know, it's it's fine. They're setting up the story of Narcissus reasonably well, so um, that's fine. Fine by me. Any other thoughts, Alan? What is it with Greek um, mythology that uh, you know two of the lead characters that we keep coming across are both blind, Tiresias and Homer? Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, they're both. Well, I mean, uh, deb de debate as to whether Homer is a character or or, or the author. <coughs> um, uh, but um, yeah, Tiresias, the the, the blind prophet, um, and it explicates his backstory reasonably well. I mean, it's all there. Um, um, always a fun part is Tiresias. Anyway, any other thoughts? Okay, let's go into what I'm calling scene two, uh, which features Dorastus and Clinias. Come, prithee, let us go. Come, Clinias, come, and girt thy basket dagger to thy bum. Let us, I say, be packing and go meet the poor blind prophet stalking in the street. Let us be jogging quickly. Peace, you ass, I smell the footing of Tiresias. Enter Tiresias. Oh, thou which hast thy staff to be thy tutor, whose head doth shine with bright hairs white as pewter, like silver moon, when as she kissed her minion in late mouse mont, the swain eclipsed Endymion, who being called Endymion the drowsy, slept fifty years, and for want of shift was lousy. O oh, thou whose breast I, even this little cantle, is counsel's cap case, prudence's portmantle. O oh, thou that pickest wisdom out of guts, as easy as men do kernels out of nuts. Look in our midriff, and I pray you tell us whether we two shall live and die good fellows. How do you both? Well, I thank you. Are you not sickly? No, I thank God. Yet yeah, you shall both die quickly. Go, oh, thou hast done. Tiresias, bid adieu. Thy part is well played, and thy words are true. Exit Tiresias. Shall we die quickly both? I pray, what colour? I'll be a dyer, thou shalt be a fuller. We'll cozen the prophet. I, my life, we, I, my life will pawn ye. Thou shalt die white, and I'll die orange tawny. Enter Narcissus, walking. <whistles> oh, eyes, what see you? Eyes, be ever bloodshed that turn your master thus into a cod's head. Oh, eyes, no eyes, no oh, instruments, oh, engines that were ordained to work your master's vengeance. His huge oriental beauty melts my eyeballs into raindrops, even as sun doth snowballs. Crack, eye strings, crack. Run, eyes, run back. 
my lovely brace of beagles, look no more on yon shining sun, for your eyes are not eagles. Leave off the chase, my pretty brace, and hide you in your kennel, and hunt no more, your sight is sore. Oh, that I had some fennel. Leave off to brag, thou boy of Venus bred. I am as fair as thou, for white and red. If then twixt me and thee there's no more odds, why I on earth and thou amongst the gods? Thy voice, Narcissus, so softly and so loud, makes in mine ears more music than a crowd of most melodious minstrels. And thy tongue is edged with silver and with jewels strong. Thy throat, which speaketh ever and anon, anon, is far more shriller than the pipe of Pan. Thy weasened pipe is clearer than an organ. Thy face more fair than was the head of Gorgon. Thy hair. <laughs> Sorry, uh, thy hair which bowed to thy neck so fair, dishevels excels the hair of the fair queen of devils. And <laughs> Eric, stop laughing at your own jokes. <laughs> Are you ready to go? <laughs> Um, and <laughs> yeah, it will it will be fine. Thy hair which bought thy neck so fair the shovels excels <laughs> the hair of the fair queen of devils. And thy perfumed breath far better savors than does the sweat sweet hot breath of blowing neighbors. Thy azure veins bluer than Saturn shine. And what are Cupid's eyes to those of thine of thine? Thy coral cheeks hath a far better luster than Ceres when the sun in harvest bust her. Selenus for straight back, and I can tell you, you put down Bacchus for a slender belly. To pass from branch to bark, from rind to root, Venus, her husband, hath not such a foot. O oh, thou whose cheeks are like the sky so blue, whose nose is ruby of the sun like hue, whose forehead is most plain without all wrinkle, whose eyes like stars in frosty night do twinkle, most hollow are thy eyelids and thy ball, whither then ivory brighter, yea, withal, whose ledge of teeth is far more bright than jet is, whose lips are too, too good for any lettuce. Oh, do thou <laughs> condescend unto my boon. Grant me thy love, grant it, O oh, silver spoon. Silver moon, silver moon. Grant me thy love. To, to speak, I first began. <laughs> grant me thy love, grant it, O oh, golden sun. Nor sun, nor moon, nor twinkling star in sky. Nor god, nor goddess, your, nor yet nymph am I. And though my sweet face be set out with ruby, you miss your mark. I am a man as you be. A man, Narcisse, thou hadst, hast a manlike figure. Then be not like unto the savage tiger, so cruel as the huge chameleon, nor yet so changing as small elephant. A man, Narcisse, then be not thou a wolf to devour my heart in thy moor's gripping gulf. Be none of these, and let not nature vaunt her that she hath made a man like to a panther. A man thou art, Narcisse, and so are we. Then love thou us again as we love thee. A man I am, and swear by gods above, I cannot yet find in my heart to love. Cannot find love in heart? Oh, search more narrow. Thou well shalt know him by his ivory arrow. That arrow, when in breast my blood was tunning, broached my heart's barrel, set it all a-running, which with love's liquor, unless thou do staunch, all my life's liquor will run out my paunch. Why would you have me love? You talk most oddly. Love is a naughty thing and an ungodly. Is love ungodly? Love is still a god. 
but in his nonage, always under rod. Love, oh, Narcissus, love, Narcissus. We beseech, we beseech thee. thee. Oh, mm. love. No love, good Gentiles. I'll assure you, no love. And exit Dorestus and Clinius. Uh, Narcissus goes for a bit of an amble. Um, okay, well, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, beyond the fact that uh, Clinius is really not very good at compliments. Um, I mean, there's some <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it's a good. At least he said thy face more fair than was the head of Gorgon. I mean, if he said your hair was as good as the head of Gorgon, that would have been even worse. But you know, none of this was great. Um, I think you're trying to be complimentary, but you're just clearly not very good at it. But then Dorastus just gazumps you clearly because who doesn't want to hear that their lips are too do too good for any lettuce? <laughs> now that might be just uh, an accidental modernization that actually it means something else and but i'm i i i'm fairly certain that that's what it means um it's glorious it's glorious stuff uh eric i suspect this is why these two guys are single i mean yeah i, I there's part of me that really wants to go into a singles bar and try some of these as chat up lines i and and film the results because i i think um you know um, I mean, the rhyming of kennel and fennel, I think, is uh, some rhyming of pure desperation there. Um, that's what I love about these rhymes. They're just, you know, you set up a rhyme you can't finish <laughs> with any dignity. Uh, Alan. I, I must admit, I'm getting vibes um, from a hell of a lot later than this because an awful lot of the wordplay is reminding me of people, you know, 20th century, porter and coward. You know, you could you could almost see that that style of verbal humour, you know, lasting through into this. Hmm. I mean, it's it 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 you know, it's all deliberately silly, and it's done with mm. some skill. This isn't a bad writer writing terrible verse. This is a a, a reasonably good writer writing deliberately terrible verse. Mm. Um, I'm not going to say it is a work of genius or anything, because you know some of these are quite obvious, and you know people have churned out this kind of script from time immemorial, but. Um, there's some really good stuff in there. Uh, I, you know, Tiresias, I like, you know, turning up and saying you're both going to die soon. They do a rather bad p die joke, dying cloth, get it, um, stuff. Um, but yeah, um, I like the way Tiresias sort of writes his own exit cue as well. Uh, right, that's me done. Um, uh, I'm off. Um, Bryony. Yeah, like that, the die bit was the only bit where it was a bit weak for me, really, because the rest of it, I don't know if it was meant to be as funny as we found it or if it is like a us looking at it with our modern eyes. But yeah, it's been hilarious. It's been a lot of fun to read because you just don't know what your next line's going to be as well, which is lovely. But the rhyming lasted well as well because, you know, sometimes the changing in spelling and pronunciation, but we haven't. It's it's all still rhyming really well. Yeah, and it's actually one of the few instances where I can you can say, look, lean into the 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 rhymes that maybe are a bit archaic because actually that will make it funnier. Normally in plays you you don't do that because you don't mock the change of language because that's tedious. But actually this is one of the few occasions where you can do that occasionally because uh, I, I I stumbled earlier on the uh, the rhyme on laugh because um, it's it's down as quaff laugh staff so it's, it's uh, uh, you can't quite make those rhymes match together even even with different accents uh, which is a shame but um there's some good stuff there uh who was waving someone else eric were you waving yes yeah i was just gonna say that i, I can't help but wonder what um the uh, narcissus actually looks like in this case because there's this description of like you know red cheeks and you know we heard that earlier as well and you know sort of yeah just costuming and all that stuff i can't help but wonder what on earth they sound like and look like well his huge oriental beauty melts uh, people's eyeballs so um uh you know we've uh, we've got um you know helpful descriptors there we got co costume notes earlier actually with the uh, the nymphs of uh, green blue and white so we've got some we have got some costuming clues um uh, I, uh, Clinius, uh, just uh, just to boil down, uh, dig down into some of these lines. Um, Venus, her husband hath not such a foot. Now that's not, you know, it's not Venus hath not such a. Her husband, who's a blacksmith. 
Um, you know, I'm assuming it's a big, hairy, sweaty foot. Hobbit feet. That's what we're looking at there. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so there's some... I mean, I think with this, where she's just throwing as many gags at you as possible, I can forgive the slightly weak die jokes because, you know, there's a new gag coming around the corner every, uh, every few seconds. And we've got a, a call back to Endymion um nice nice call to endymion i don't know if that's referencing the play but um uh it's it's nice to have it there um uh it's a text that maybe they know anyway uh let's move on let's find out what else this script is throwing at us this 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 christmas uh scene three as i've labeled it, it you may argue it isn't because narcissus is still on stage but it's a different unit of action enter florida and Clo cloris or Clovis, Clovis. Yes, there's no R there. Clovis. Clovis, what is it I wish that I do see? What form doth charm this storm within my breast? What face, what grace, what race may that same be? So fair, so rare, debonair breeds this unrest. How white, how bright, how light, like star of Venus, his beams and gleams, so streams, so fair between us. Tis Venus, sure. Why do we stand and falter? Let us go shake our thighs upon the altar. Most brightest Hesperus, for thou seemst to me so. Aye, and in very deed thou well mayst be so. For as big as a man is every planet, Though it seems afar that we may span it, shine thou on me, sweet planet. Be so good as with thy fiery beams to warm my blood. I'll bear thee light and think light of the burden, and say, light planet ne'er was heavy laden. To speak the truth, fair maid, if you will have us, O Oedipus, I am not, I am Davos. But Master Davis, be not so discourteous as not to hear a maiden's plaint for virtuous. Speak on a god's name, so love be not the theme. Oh, whiter than a dish of clouted cream. Speak not of love? How can I over skip to speak of love to such a cherry lip? It would beseem a maiden's slender vacity never to speak of anything but chastity. As true as Helen was to Menelaus, so true to thee will be thy Florida. As was to trusty Pyramus, true as this be, so true to you will ever thy sweet Clois be. Oh, do not stay a moment nor a minute. Love is a puddle, I am all shoes in it. Do not delay us half a minute's mountenance that are in love, in love, with thy sweet countenance. Then take my dole, although I deal my arms ill. Narcissus cannot love with any damsel, although, for most part, men do love incline all. I will not, I. This is your answer final. And so farewell. March on, dogs. Love's a griper. If I love any, tis Tickler and Piper. Ah, the poor rascal, never joyed it since. His fellow juggler first was juggled hence. Juggler the hope, but now to hunt abroad, where, if I meet love's little minutative god, I'll pay his breach until I make his bum ache. For why? The talk of him hath turned my stomach. Exit Narcissus. <laughs> Let's go and die, sweet chorus. The poets of our loves shall write the stories. Enter Clinias Dorastus, meeting them. Well met, fair Florida sweet. Which way go you? In faith, sweet Clinias, I cannot, cannot know you. No, no, but did you see the white Narci Narcissi? The whitest man alive a hunting is. He that doth look far whiter than the villet. Or moon at midday, or else sky at twilight. That is the same. Even that is Narcissus. That is that Narcissus. He ha that hath loved, despised, and scorned us. Not you alone he scorns, but us also. Oh, 
do not grieve when maids part stakes in woe. Oh, that same youth, the scummer of all scorn, of Sir Quidry, the very shoeing horn, pillar of pride, casting top of contempt, stopple of state lines for taking vent. Many youths, many maids sought him to gain. No youths, no maids could ever him obtain. And thus I pray, and hands to heaven up leave, so may he love, and ne'er his love achieve. Look you for maids no more, our part is done. We come but to be scorned, and so are gone. Ah, uh, exuant. But we have more to do than have we purdy. We must have fish and hunt the hare so hardy. For even as after hare runs swiftest beagle, so doth Narcissus, our poor heart's corn eagle. So, um, some more classic stuff here. I, I, I like the self-aware meta stuff of going, um, you know, uh, there, there, no, no more women in this uh, show. We, 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 we are literally this is our entire function within the the narrative. Um, we're done, and then the other characters going, no, we've got another bit coming up. Um, uh, just on the uh, the uh, 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 general note of uh, uh, slight awkwardness is that yeah the, we 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 have rather an extreme angle of the the the, the sort of white beauty standard thing going on here. Um, hopefully we don't go in the other direction of uh, uh, actively uh, going against uh, uh, in the other direction. I'm uh, fingers crossed that we don't go suddenly actively racist. Um, but. Um, Yes, uh, so far it's uh, it's very much in the background, and there's uh, some good wordplay still going on here. Um, I'm sure ache uh, possibly had more of a ack sound to it as well, so it probably rhymed better than uh, than it currently does. But it's still a great exit line from Narcissus there, um, and um, yeah, there's some really love thing. Loves loves a puddle. I am all shoes in it. <laughs> I want to use that. I'm not sure what to do with the line, let us go shake our thighs upon the altar. Um, <laughs> I'm really not well, sure what to what make you, of that say, one. Hmm? That's what you say after the lettuce line works in the singles bar. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, would you like to... Sh no. Uh, <laughs> shall we go shake our thighs upon the altar? Uh, no, I'm not trying that one. Okay. Um... Yeah. Um, so yeah, more people going for basically. That's this scene. Um, Narcissus is still having nothing to do with it. I don't know whether debonair means exactly the same thing as it does today, but uh, the so fair, so rare debonair is is a delightful midline uh, rhyming thing. Yeah, I'm I'm still enjoying this um, very much. So let's see if it outstays its welcome. Uh, as we go forward, uh, scene four, enter Echo. Who, why, wherefore, from whence or what I am, know if you can that Echo is my name, but cannot speak a word nor half a syllable unless you speak before so intelligible. But ho, oh, the hobby horse you'll think to absurd, that I should of myself once speak a word. It is true, but let your wisdoms tell me then, how do you know Echo from another man? I was a well-tongued nymph, but what of that? My mother Juno, still to hold in chat with tales of tubs, from thence I ever strove, while nymphs abroad lay always under Jove. But oh, when drift was spied, my angry grammar made ever since my tottering tongue to stammer, and now in wild woods and in moist mountains, in high tall valleys and in steepy plains, echo I live, echo, surnamed the doleful, that in remembrance now could weep a bowlful, or rather, if you will, echo the sorrowful, that in remembrance now could weep a barrowful. Yolopi, Yolopi. 
Uh, yes, exit uh, with the cries of the song that's going to follow next as we go straight into scene five, uh, where uh, Dorastus, Narcissus and Clinius in theory are entering singing this song. Hark, they cry, I hear by that the dogs have put the hair from quat. When woe be unto little what, yolp, 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 yolp. Hollow in the hind dog's hollow, so come on then, solo, solo, and let us so blithely follow. Yolp, 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 yolp. Oh, the dogs are out of sight, but the cry is my delight. Hark, how jumble hits it right. Yolp, 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 yolp. Over briars, over bushes, who's afeard of pricks and pushes? He's no hunter, worth two rushes. Yolp, 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 yolp. But how long thus shall we wander? Oh, the hare's a lusty stander. Follow a pace, the dogs are yonder. Yolp, 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 yolp. Exit. Um, I think we'll just briefly pause there before we go straight into the next scene. We had mentions of dogs earlier. Um, so these are the, so that's obviously a dog singing song uh, with Narcissus and his his hounds, presumably. Um, yeah, dogs, dog singing. And Echo walking on saying, I can't speak unless somebody else speaks first. You may have noticed there's an inherent contradiction in this speech. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then it's like at the end, it's like Echo knows they've done a, a really bad joke. So they're just going to pause and do it again in a slightly different format. So it's like, I've rhymed doleful with bowlful. Now I'm going to do sorrowful with barrowful. It's like you're expecting a groan after the first one and you want to milk it for the audience. It's like maybe Echo has more and it's just not in the script. And you could actually do that for 20 minutes until the audience loses the world to live. It's that kind of show. Any thoughts in the room? No. A.S. Eric. Well, I guess it's kind of um, that thing where... It uh, Echo is probably just, I mean, the person playing Echo was probably like, give me more lines, I must speak more lines. So obviously they wrote this for, or, you know, yeah, for Echo, because, you know, it would just either be sort of echoing everybody else, which is kind of, it, it's fun, but also can be kind of boring. Yeah, we're going to see whether it's fun at slash boring when Echo gets really into into their echoing business in a moment. Sarah. I know the song is meant to be Dorastus, Narcissus and Clinius, but in my head, I kind of see people dressed up as dogs. So the dogs are actually doing it. And, and I know that wouldn't quite make sense with the words because it's like they're following the dogs. In the, but I just really want to see like a little chorus line of dogs. There's no reason why there can't this. also be a chorus line of dogs going yop, 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 yop. Yeah. I'm, I'm open to lots of people dressed up as dogs. That, that's entirely fine. And in fact, if this does become something we do at the Christmas party, that's probably what I'm going to encourage a number of people to do. I feel that that's uh, exactly our, our, our Christmas thing. Uh, OK, we're getting to the scene we've all been waiting for. Scene six, as I've labelled it. S Enter one with a bucket and bowels and grass. A well there was, without in mud, of silver hue with waters clear, whom neither sheep that chew the cud, shepherds nor goats came ever near, whom, truth to say, nor beast nor bird, nor windfalls yet from trees had stirred. He straws the grass about the bucket. And round about it there was grass, as learned lines of poets show, which by next water nourished was. Sprinkles water. Ne'er to it, ne'er to it woo a wood did grow. Sets down the boughs. To keep the place, as well I wot, with too much sun from being hot, and thus, lest you should have mistook it, the truth of all I to you tell. Suppose you, the well, had a bucket, and so the bucket stands for the well, and tis, Least you should count me for a soto, a very pretty figure called Pass Pro Toto. Okay, so yeah, we've got the game of we can't afford a well. Uh, I've brought on a bucket. This will stand in for well. Um, I am going to cast some grass and stuff to build a scene. Sarah. 
I love the fact that that whole scene is basically a stage direction, but it's like the props are so crap, we actually have to tell the audience what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> there's supposed to be a well. Yeah, and it's just some of the rhyming here is also good. It's like the mistook it, and I'm waiting for the bucket uh, <laughs> to come. And the sot, oh, I mean, oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Emma, uh, walking stage direction. <laughs> yes. I'm going to guess that the sprinkling water is getting the audience wet, right? Kind of a bit Panto-esque. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I think all of this is Panto-esque. I mean, you know, yeah. this is exactly this, this, that kind of energy, isn't it? Um, uh, Sarah than Eric. Or it could be one of those things where you've got the bucket of water and you swing it round a few times and then you swing it at the audience. Oh, and it's actually full of glitter. Yeah. <laughs> or Satan's sand, as it's otherwise known. Uh, Eric. Yeah, I, I like the idea that it's sort of, Kind of, it's basically kids make like the way it's written. It's kind of like when kids pretend, you know, you know they kind of play dress up kind of thing. And this is going to be my bucket, and I'm going to put it here, and it's going to be the well that narcissists will look into. It just feels very sort of ex, you know over explanatory. Mm, yeah, and you know this is the thing. Uh, even uh, at a university, some of the, the the students could be quite young. Um, you know, not not. Uh, young young uh, per se but so you know younger than you'd think and certainly younger than modern students so uh you know there, there could be a quality to the one with bucket doesn't have many lines so uh unless it's the porter again um which it's not impossible that it is um Bryony. i don't know if i should or not i just wanted to say well 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 thank you thank you i think we've hit our level um uh, for today okay let's go on i've labeled this as a series of in, uh, different scenes but um i think we can think of pretty much after the dogs that this is one ongoing uh scene running into itself uh let's let's let it run let's give it its head uh scene seven as i've called it enter Dorestus, echo answering him from within so from a distance narcissus yes us. kiss you who are you with a bot take you. Bots take you. Bots take me, you rogue. You rogue. Slid, he retorts word for word. Word for word. Clinius, prithee, where art thou, Clinius? In ye ass. In where? In a ditch? Itch. What is his business? At his business. You don't tell me truly. You lie. Say so again, I'll cudgel you duly. You do fly. Of your terms, you are very full. You are very full. Do you crow? I shall crack your coxcomb. Coxcomb. I shall make you wine and blubber. Blubber. You'll make an end and dispatch. Patch. Go to, you'll let these words pass. Pass. If you come to, I'll make you sing in palinody. Noddy. Fool, coxcomb, lover, patch and noddy. Are these good words to give a body? Do not provoke me, I shall come. Come. Meet me if you dare. If you dare. I come, despair not. Spare not. And exit. Enter Clinias, echo answering within still. Dorastus, where art thou, Dorastus? <laughs> I'm sorry, I managed to keep the straight face all through the loss. <laughs> oh, come on, it's not the first ass no, gag we've had. I, if it I, had in your, a in your ass I managed earlier... to get through that one, but then this was just one ask too many. Sorry. Right. Can you ask, give the line again, please. Yeah. Give Echo mm. the cue. I have to unmute myself. <laughs> Dorastus, where art thou, Dorastus? <laughs> Ask to us. Ask to you? Who's that said ask to you? You. Know, know me for what I am as good as yourself. Elf. Oh, why? I hope you bent so far apart. All apart. All apart? Yes, we are alone, but do you not mean to fight? I trust in Jove. Trust in Jove. Jove helps then if we fight, but we would trust to, your, to our swords. Words. 
Words. Why do you think this your words shall help us to fright? Right. Tis no such matter. You're mightily out. Loud. Loud. <laughs> Dost abuse me so. Go go to your skull scab. Rascal scab. Rascal scab, why thou groom base and needy? Needy. Slid, if I meet you, I'll bang you. Bang you. So I nay then I'll be at hand, keep you pick purse. Pick pass. Dare you use me thus to my face, spider? I dare. <laughs> but will you stand to it and not flinch? Not flinch. Well, meet me. I'm like iron and steel, trusty. Rusty. Rusty, what mock me to my face again? Us again. Out of doubt, if we meet, I shall the box. Ox. Why, the fool rides me. I am spurgled and jolted. Jolt head. Jolt head? This is more than I can brook. Rook. Rook too. Nay, then, as far as the knocking goes, I am yours to command, sir. Come on, sir. And into the next sequence, enter Narcissus to this, uh, we can assume the exit, yes, exit of Clinias, enter Narcissus to this hilarious set piece. Oh, I am weary. I have run today ten miles, nay, and a quarter, I dare say. You may believe it, for my joints are numb, and every finger truly is a thumb. For my young hunters, Clinius and Dorastus, Surely so far today they have outpassed us, but here I am, encompassed round about, and do not know the way, nor in, nor out. What? Holler! 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 Is anybody nigh? Aye. Come near. Come near. Whither? Whither? Prithee, help me fall, else I am the rude wood's forfeiture. Fair feature. Oh, Lord, sir, tis but your pleasure to call it so. It's so. I had rather have your counsel how to get out of this labyrinth. La labyrinth. Labyrinth? Why, so I do, sore against my will. But to labour out of it, what shall I do? Do. Nay, pray, help me out if you love me. Love me. Come near, then. Why do you fly? Why do you fly? Where be ye? Here be. Let us come together. Let us come together. I prithee, come. I come. Let me die first, and I'll meddle with me. Meddle with me. And exit. Um, yes, I, 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 I don't know whether um, that's just our modern minds with the I come moment, uh, whether that has an early modern association, but it works very well for the scene. Um, so, yeah, we've got... Um, it also, actually, with Narcissus's entrance there, it really actually shows what was going on with the dog's song, actually, mm. as well. So Narcissus is chasing the dogs. He's being chased by Dorestus and Clinias. So it's actually a chase sequence as well as a song. Um, so there's a huge amount of potential there. If also we have dogs, uh, and also maybe what the dogs are chasing, we have got a lot of potential for that, that, that short song uh, to really make that into a very, very silly sequence that could be really rather fun um okay all of the uh, i i love the way that we get the third time we get the ass joke it's ass again it it, it it's it's actually very knowledge knowingly going it's the same joke yeah um self-indulgent but if done at pace um and with occasional gestures of going that one doesn't work um <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, what am I to do? Um, microphone and reverb, I feel, uh, is important for Echo as well. Mm. Any thoughts in the room beyond the obvious? I, I, I feel that Echo should be uh, positively climaxing by the end of uh, the, the, that, that scene. Because it, it, it does seem to be mo moving it um, <laughs> in that direction. Uh, Eric. I have to say, I do enjoy early modern echoes, even if they're not in this play. But I mean, you know, they, they always select the words that they wish to sort of echo. Um, yeah, I like how Echo decides that Narcissus is too pretty to be messed with. Um, so she just kind of goes, Well, come here. <laughs> um, as opposed to sort of um, 
pissing him off. <laughs> Which yes. basically pisses him off anyway, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, so the Echo is being playful and uh, 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 deliberately a messing with the the first two who are now going to uh, think that they're fighting each other you know that they have a beef with each other so they're going to go and fight presumably uh which was pre predicted earlier uh whereas actually echo is definitely amorously interested in in narcissus poor thing meddle with me um yeah, that's 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 a yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to stop talking now. Uh, I think that'd be wise. Uh, let us move on to the. Uh, well, we're almost at what we could call the climax, actually. So, uh, I, what I'm calling scene ten, but you could really probably break it down to only into two or three scenes, actually. Uh, enter Dorastus Clinius at doors. What's to you, Dorastus? Mock me all the season. Pray, Clinius, hold your tongue. You have little reason to make a fool of me and mock me too. Nay, sir, it was you that mocked me, so you do. While here I called you by for while here I called for you by Greenwood's side. You jibed on me, which you shall dear abide. <laughs> Nay, you did call me that I would loath to hear. Truly, such words as a dog would not bear. But as I scorn so to be asked and knaved, so truly do I scorn to be outbraved. Oh, frying pan of all fritters of fraud, that my cinderfer that hath that long hath been on broad shall come out of his sheath most fiery hot and slice thee small even as herbs to pot. Thou huge and humming humblebee, thou hornet, come, do thy worst. I say that I do scorn it. Oh, with thy blood I'll make so red my winer as ripest liquor as grapes in vineyard. And with thy blood I'll make my sword so ruddy as sky at eventide shall not be so bloody. They fight and fall. Oh, oh, about my heart I feel a pain. The rest is hold thy hands for I am slain. This shall thy comfort be when thou art dead. For thou hast killed me too, for I am sped. Oh, I am dead. Depart life out of hand. Stray soul from home unto the stridging sand. Strand. Go thou, my ghost, complain thee unto Radamant, that the sisters' hearts are made of adamant. Since we must pass o'er lake and Jaren's ferry, had we not sisters, we should be more merry. My soul doth say that we must go before. Narcissi will overtake us at the shore, and that that mocked us both deformed dwarf will ere it be long arrive at Sharon's Wharf. Let us, Dorastus, die, depart, decease. We loved in strife, and let us die in peace. Stay, take me with you. Let's together go. Vile well, world, adieu. We, we die. Oh, 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 oh. Enter Narcissus. Does the hag follow? Stay for her, never durst I. She has made me run so long that I am thirsty. But, oh, ye gods immortal, by good fortune, here is a well in good time and opportune. Drink, drink, Narcissus, till thy belly burst. Water is Rhenish wine for them that thirst. But, oh, remain and let thy crystal lip no more of this same cherry water sip. What deadly beauty, or what airy nymph is here below, now seated in the limb? Look, look, Narcissus, how his eyes are silver. Look, least those eyes thy heart from thee do pilfer. Yet, oh, look not, for by these eyes so heady, thy heart from thee is filched away already. Oh, well. How oft I kiss thy wholesome liquor, while on my love kisses I heap a dicker. Oh, love, come forth according to my mind. How deep I dive, yet thee I cannot find. Oh, love, come forth. My face is not so foul, that thou should scorn me. Pity me, poor soul. Well, dost thou scorn me? Nymphs, they did not so. They had a better thought of me, I trow. Not care of Ceres, Morpheus, nor of Bacchus, 
that is meat, drink, and sleep from hence shall take us. Here will I die. This well shall be my tomb. My web is spun. The Hesees lock thy loom. Lies down and rises up again. Tell me, you woods, tell me, you oaks so strong, whether in all your life, your life so long, so fair a youth pined thus, and tell me truly, whether that any man e'er loved so cruelly, the thing I like I see, but what I see and like, nonetheless I cannot find Purdy, and that that grieves my liver most, no seas, surging mountains, monstrous or weary ways, nor walls with gates is shut, do me remove. A little water keeps me from my love. Come out, come out, dear boy. Come out, dear boy. Friend I am. Oh, do not me destroy. Thou dost put out thy hand as I do mine, and thou dost pick upon me with thy eye. Smile as I smile. Besides, I took good keep, and saw the eke shed tears when I did weep. And by thy lips moving, well, I do suppose, words thou dost speak may well come to our nose, or to our ears, I'm sure they never pass, which makes me to cry out, alas! Alas! Oh, delicate, pretty youth! Pretty youth! Take on my woes, pity youth! Pity youth! Oh, sweetest boy, pray love me. Pray love me. Or else I die for thee. I die for thee. Colour is gone and blood in faces thin. And I am naught left now but bone and skin. I die, but though I die, it shall come to pass. Thirties it shall, that I, which Willem was, the flower of youth shall be made flower again. I die. Farewell, oh boy, beloved in vain. Oh boy, beloved in vain. And Narcissus presumably lies down and then rises up again. And so I died and sunk into my grandam, surnamed old earth. Let not your judgments random, for if you take me for Narcissus, you are very silly. I desire you to take me for a daffodown billy, for so I rose. And so I am in troth, as may appear by the flower in my mouth. Now, auditors of intelligence quick, I pray you suppose that Echo is sick, sick at the heart, for you must think, for lack of love, she could nor eat nor drink, so that of her nothing remained but a bone, and that, they say, was turned into a stone. Only her voice was left, as by good hap, you may perceive, if you impart a clap. Rapturous applause. Uh, enter the porter as epilogue. Are those the lads that would do the deed? They may be gone, and God be their speed. I'll take up their bucket, but I swear by the water, I have seen a far better play at the theatre. I'll shut them out of doors, tis no matter for their larger, for their largers. Think you well of my service, and I'll bear the charges. If there be any that expect some dances, tis I must perform it, for my name is Francis. And maybe Francis does a little dance. Um, uh, yeah. I, I do like the idea that the porter just has to come on and tidy up and do the get out because all the actors have buggered off. Um, and <laughs> I've seen a better play at the theatre. Wasn't impressed. Wasn't impressed. Um, I've, I've seen the professionals do it, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we have two people fight and die. Um, oh, oh, a vile world, a Jew, we die. Oh, 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 oh. Um, no indication as to whether they they exit the stage at any point whether they're still lying there uh, i think there's a lot of potential business of tripping over corpses uh, that might be option there um narcissus has got all this option of how do you play the scene into the bucket or not into the bucket or, or and and uh, how much is how much uh which where do you go um and of course constantly lying down and then immediately getting back up again um 
and uh, yeah, constantly dying but never quite dying, and then of course getting up and saying, "You shouldn't be sad if I'm I'm dead. Uh, you know, shouldn't be sad. It's fine. It's not, not really me." It's an old joke, but it works well. Um, any, um, yeah. That was fun. There's some more material we get to go, but that's the play, as it were. Um, uh, Eric. Yeah, I was just wondering if, um, well, because also you were mentioning whether they're stripping over corpses and stuff. I just imagine that, like, they kind of kill each other and then step, get up by themselves and walk off. Which is, you know, sort of very um, okay. Oh, yeah. and, you know, sort of, I don't know, just fun. Uh, also, that that scene was very like dead, deceased, completely dead, or whatever. It just felt very the rest of life. <laughs> yeah, up the daisies. Uh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> giving up the ghost and so on and so forth. It just feels very dead parrot sketch. Yes, it does. Um, and, and again, there's that question of how much room is there for improvisation of additional lines there and as well, you know, because the, the script is very tight, but it does suggest that there is options for ad-libs uh, in here um, and, uh, uh, on the whole. Uh, there's, there's, there's a couple of bits where I'm sort of just going, I'm not quite sure what Dorestus and Clinius are actually saying as they're calling on their deaths. It's like, we've got some words and we've got some, you know, I need to find something that rhymes with wharf. Um, what are we going to say? Something that's a bit awkward um but it's just like there's no there's they're just saying these things and radamant and stuff and it, it doesn't quite really mean anything really apart from just stuff so yeah okay uh alan physically i think uh, michael green wrote the uh the script on uh, on that scene with those two you know they obviously prolong the death for as long as they can get away with it Mm, this whole in terms thing, of stage business this whole thing is the art of course acting basically uh, yeah which if uh, you've never read it uh, we can hardly recommend we're not in any way uh, affiliated with the uh, the this the the uh, the works of michael green or his publishers but um uh, just pointing out uh, that uh, as a disclaimer just it's a, a a fun read if you've never read it it's a, it's the closest uh you know the it's the best acting training uh, book ever um uh, bar none You'll learn more about practical stagecraft from the art of course acting than you will from anything else. Um, most importantly, how not to die on stage, as well as how to die on stage. Uh, make sure it's in a comfortable position, ideally behind something. Uh, OK, we have, after the show, there were a series of speeches, Most, most, uh, I think pretty much all of them by the porter, um, but we've handed them out um, to uh, uh, Francis, the porter, Francis Clark seems to do a series of speeches to different people in the room. Uh, I've handed them out to different people because uh, I'm nice that way, but I've handed them out to people, which is uh, mean of me because there's a lot of random Latin and stuff in there. Um, just say it quickly and don't worry about it too much. Um, uh, apart from the rest, the stuff in English, take your time because I think there's some interesting stuff in there. Um, we would not perform any of this stuff, I don't think. Um, we're just doing it for for history. Uh, so, Bryony, you are uh, post-show pontification <coughs> number one. Um, so this is a speech made for, for the aforesaid porter, who pronounced it in the hall before most of the house and master president that had sconced him groats for letting the fiddlers in the hall at Christmas. So, take it away. Ile ego ki condam I am he that in old season have made Lily leap out of his skin, and with a muster of sentences out of his syntaxes, have besieged the ears of the audience in the behalf of the wretched. But alas, mihi istic nec seritor nec metitor. It is to me neither a sorry turn nor a merry turn. I have sifted out for other men's sakes the flower of my fancy, that I have left nothing but the bran in my brain. And yet, who is there amongst them that in the depths of my distress will speak for the poor porter who melts the muses into mourning or turns Parnassus into plaints, Helicon into heaviness, Apollo into an apology for my sake? My learning goeth not beyond Lily, nor my reading beyond my rules. Yet have I for them so canvassed their concavity that I have opened their entrails, 
so dived into the depth of them that I have manifested their marrow, so pried into their profundity that I have placed the very pith of them before you. And alas, that I should now speak for myself, what remains for me but the rind and the bark, when I have given the root and the body to others? What remains for me but the shell, when I have given others the substance? What remains for me but the curds, when I have given others the cream? Yea, what is left for me but the pairings, when I have given others the pears? But I therein made known my valour, for you know, Aliorum vitia cernere oblivisci, oblivisci sorum, to supply other men's wants and to forget his own. Proprium est stultitio is part of a stout man. Since then, I must speak for myself. Stat mihi casus renovare omnes. You shall hear the whole cause, case, and the course of it. Sub nocte silente, e in nocte vel paulo, ante noctum cum spectator in ignibus aurum. When you have seen gold in the fire, the fire shines so like gold. Ecce per opaca locorum came the fiddlers creeping along. Densa subter testudine casus their instruments under their arms, in their cases, and at length. Itum est in viscera terrare, broke open into the heart of the hall. Neither, when they were there, could they be content to warm their fingers by the fire and be gone, though I would have persuaded them there too. But uvat usque morari et confere gradum. They would need stay and have the youth dance, but oh to see, woe to see, that pleasure is but a pinch and felicity but a philippe, when as juvat ire per altum, some were cutting capers aloft in the air, can it similiter quick, and they likewise, with their minstrelsy, fitting it to their footing, all on a sudden, subito, I may say to them, but repent, to me, their sport was spoiled, their music marred, their dancing dashed with a vox hominem sonat, with a voice, with an awful voice, hoacine fieri flagitia, are these the fruits of the fires, satur a me, sto satur ab illis, stant, they that even now scraped so fast with their sticks, fell now to scraping faster with their legs. Their fum-fum was turned to mum-mum, and their pleasant melody to most pitiful making of faces. But when they looked at their fiddles, should have flying about their ears, their carved skin cases about their calves' head pates, as the sun shines brightest through a shower, so did softness in the midst, in the midst of severity. There was no more said to them but teak his ait eripe flamis. They were best, since they had made many men keels warm with shaking to cool their own by quaking without door. But the more the but the more mercy was showed before, the less was left for me. Had I been dealt with so mercifully, I had not need to have come with this exclamation. Or had it been but gratia ab officio, but a groat out of mine office, I should not have stonied the stones nor rented the rocks with my dolorous outcries. But when it shall come to denari disit quod denos, when ten groats shall make a muster together and sit heavy on my head, actum est illicet the porter perit. O weathercock of wretchedness that I am, seated on the maypole of misfortune, whither shall I turn, or to whom shall I look for relief? Shall I speak to my minstrels for money? Why, they have already forsaken me to the verifying of the old proverb, quantum quisque sua numerorum servat in arca, tantum habit et fide, 
As long as a man hath money in his purse, so long he shall have the fiddlers. What is to be looked for any of them that will do nothing without pay, and hard money for their harmony? Shall I speak to my friends? Why, nullus ad amissas ibit amicus opes. Oh, then let me run to the spear of Achilles, recorded by ancient philosophers, which first hurt me and last can heal me. Let my penitency find pity, and my confession move compassion. If you will live according to rule, ever after penitet toedet, let miseret miserescit succede. That they came in, it was a fault of oversight in not overseeing my office. If any should slink by Cerberus out of hell, it were a thing to be wondered at, and yet we see their dust. There are so many spirits walking. If any should steal by Janus into heaven, it were much it were much worthy of marvel, and yet we see their dust. There are so many of Jupiter's lemons. If any should skip in or out by me, it is not to be admired, for why? Cerberus the porter of hell hath head. Janus hath two, and I, your poor college porter, have but one, that they were not put out of the college when they were in. It was a fault, but a fault of courtesy, for who could find in his heart when he seeth a man accompanied with music, musis comitantibus, to bid him ibis homere for us, get you home for an ass. But though my breast, I must confess, were then, some, were then somewhat moved with their melody, yet hereafter my breast shall be marble when they warble. Nemo sibi mimos asipere debet favori. I will never let minstrels in again upon favour. For yourselves I can say no more but profit. And when, after this, Christmas cheer is ended, you fall again to your studies. I could wish Hippocrene may be Hippocrese, the Muses Muscadine, and the Pierides pies every day for your sakes. And as for my ten groats, if it will please you to remit it, I will give you Deseus Decem Milli Grati Gratiarum Dixi. Uh, well done there on that. I think the hardest of the uh, the speeches, but we shall see as we go to the uh, the next speech, which is Emma. I think a speech delivered by Francis Clark again to the Lady Kennedy. Noble lady, give him leave that hath been so bold as to take leave to speak before your ladyship, and out of the prognostics, a lot of profound pond or deep dale, but out of the candlestick of mine own observation, to give your ladyship some lighting of a great thunder that will happen in the morning. The reason of it is a flat, slimy and sulphurous matter exhaled out of the kitchens and inflamed in the highest region of the dripping pan, which will breed fiery comets with much lightning and thunder and the influence of it will so domineer in the cook's heads that are brought up under the torrid zone of the chimney that few of them will take rest this night and suffer as few to take rest in the morning. They have set a little porch before so great an house and have called their show the fly. Some say because a maid coming to town with butter was met by a cook and by him deceived in a wood near adjoining, whose laments the dryads and hammerdryads of the place, pitying, turned her into a butterfly. And ever since, the cooks are bound to this anniversary celebration of her metamorphosis. But soft, if the cooks hear that the porridge pot of my mouth runs over so, they will keel it with the ladle of reprehension. Therefore, I will make haste away, only asking this bone, which will be as good as a bone to the cooks, that your ladyship, your ladyship's servants, Monsieur Piers, may ride tomorrow with the fiery fraternity of his fellow cooks and make up the worthy company of the round table, which they are resolved not to leave till the whole house go round with them. 
And uh, the speech by Francis Clark now. Um, Francis Clark having done speech number one, speech number two. Um, uh, Sarah, I think, has the joy of a speech in the behalf of the freshman now. Speech by Toad. Sorry. Um, <laughs> speech after speech after speech. Are we not some? Yeah. How drunk are they? I feel they need to be very, very drunk by this point. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Ne sevi magne sacerdos, be not so severe, great session holder. Let pity prevail over the penitent. Let thy words of wormdom go down again into thy throat, and so by consequence into thy belly. But let not those go to the place from whence they came, and so by coherence to the place of execution. And though these be, as it is rightly said in the rule, turba gravis, parsi placid de quae inimica quieti, yet think what goes next before, sis bonus ovelixque tuis, and although I must needs say I am sorry for it, that fertor at atrocia flagitia designasse, yet remember what follows immediately in the place, teque ferent irae Poenitusse tue, your lordship is learned as well as I. It is bootless, and I should offer you the boots, you knowing the Latin to expound. I am here the jailer, the janus, the janitor. You are the judge, the justice, the Jupiter to this miserable company. Yet bear I not two faces under a hood, neither deal I doubly between your lordship and the lewd. For though Janus and the jailer go together, ut bifrons custos, yet boss stands for a bar to distinguish the jailer from the thief, ut bifrons custos boss fur. Oh, that you were Jupiter, to be a helping father to these sons of sorrow. For I were Janus indeed, that might have two tongues to entreat for this pitiful crew. Look! O oh, thou flower of favour, thou marigold of mercy, and columbine of compassion, look, O oh, look on the dolorous dewdrops distilled from the limbex or loopholes of their eyes, and plentifully powered on the flower of their faces. O oh, see in these, O oh, thou most exalted eldest son of justice, a lamentable example. Consider that homo bulla, honour is but a blast, pity. Oh, pity the cause of these hopeless, helpless, heartless, and indeed, indeed half-hanged young men. If they have erred, humanum est. They are men. Look not thou for that of them, which you can expect, but which you can but expect of gods. Have they spoken against the laws of your court? Why, dolet dictum imprudente adolescenti et libero. Has their tongue tripped? Why, lingua percurit. It was too quick for the wit. Quickness is commendable. Pectora percusit. Have they fought with your highness servants? Have they been obstinate? Why, they have had their punishment. And totis quotis went either wet-skinned or dry-beaten to bed. Quid est quod? In hac causa defensionis agiat. Take pity, O oh, thou peerless pattern of equity, if on nothing else, yet on their youth. Some of them are heirs, all of good ability. I beseech your lordship with the rest of the joined stools, I would say the bench, take my foolish judgment and let them find for it. Nurse them according to their merits and their purses. We shall all fare the better for it. As for other punishments, I speak it with weeping tears. They have suffered no small affliction in my keeping. Est locus in carcere quod dungeonium appellator. There they lay, noctes atque dies, at no great charge. For constat parvo fames, but so laded with irons that I made them, lividia armis brachia. And now see, they are come forth after all. Trepidus morte futura. O oh, miseresque malice, take pity on the poor prisoners, patres equion, esse senset non iam iam, you may very well remember, since yourself were in the same case. 
cut not off of some few slips those young plants of such towardsness make not mothers weep wink at small faults revoke your sentence let the common good have their fines me have my fees they have their lives and all shall be well pleased dixie and finally, after the show, uh, we have this uh, letter composed for Frank, uh, uh, Francis, uh, no, Frank Clark, uh, no, Francis Clark, yes, the porter of St. John's, who in his brother's behalf did break one's head with a black staff. I don't know if this is a post-show incident uh, that this is referring to or whether this is just a completely pointless uh, addition uh, that we're doing here. Eric, take it away. The Master Lord, then project Proctor, Worshipful and master, uh, worshipful and worthy master Proctor, whereas I, your poor vassal, in charity towards my afflicted brother, have stepped over the shoes of my duty in participating or accommodating my black staff to the easing of his overcharged articles and members, whereby I have justly plucked the old house, or rather the main beam of your indignation, upon my impotent and impudent soldier, shoulders, I do now beseech you upon the knees of my sorrowfulness and marybones of repentance to forgive me all delicates and crimes as have been formerly committed. And whereas you, contrary to my deserts, have out of the bottomless pit of your liberality restored me out of the porter's lodge of misery into the tower of felicity by giving that which was to you for me, silly me, unto your worshipful self, I mean my lady Pecunia, let me entreat you that I may burden the legs of your liberality so much farther as to deliver me the aforesaid black staff, without which I am a man and no beast, a wretch and no porter. But whereas it is thus by my most unfortunate fate that so worthy a present hath seen so unworthy a present, I cannot but condole my tragedy is committing you to the profundity or abyss of your liberality and myself to the craves of my adverse Dixie. Feels like there's a story there that I want to know the answer to, but we don't Ooh. have that, or at least I don't have that to hand. I'm sure maybe some research will dig some of that out. Um, there's some really nice one-liners in there, uh, and there's an awful lot of other stuff. Um, there's an awful lot of Latin, of which I'm sure there's some hilarious jokes in there. The first bit of pontificating is constantly mentioning Lily, and it's doing a really nice takedown of Lily's writing style. It, it It's full of all the things you expect from uh, from Lily. Uh, and it actually does it really very well. And if you've, you know, read Lily or maybe even seen some of his plays, um, which, you know, by this point, there might have been some revivals going on. They're certainly in print a lot. Um, so uh, there's something interesting going on there. Um, and there's even this whole thing about the fiddlers, this story about fiddlers and, you know, he's paid for them and they, they played thusly and uh, or went a bit wrong. Um, actually sounds a bit like something from a Lily play. I can't remember off the top of my head if it was a Lily play or it was just a very similar play. But I do remember there was a play which there was a plot device involving fiddlers and I can't remember if that's a Lily or not. I could be making that up. Um, but I'm just wondering how much of that is based on a true story or how much of that is just part of the shtick. Um, and we got a quite a nice little thing about basically applauding the cooks for the meal, uh, which feels very conventional and reasonable. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure what was going on with the freshman one that I did lose the train of thought on. There were some lovely bits, Marigold of Mercy, Columbine of Compassion. There's some, some lovely bits in there. Uh, and then this sort of abortive, um, story of assault. <laughs> Can I have my staff back, please? Um, stuff. I'm not quite sure who was... It was specifically did it... You know, it's, there's a brother thing on brother's behalf, so I'm not quite sure which of the two um, does what or how that works. But, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of really interesting stuff uh, in there, if not necessarily performable. It feels like that's definitely stuff to dig into on the historical note that we might do further down the line. Bryony, then Eric, then Sarah. I really enjoyed the bit. I mean, there was, there was quite a few bits in each one that I enjoyed, but one thing that stuck out to me that I didn't mention in the chat was in the freshman one that Sarah read, where he did all of the J alliterations, because it went a bit J for gendetta, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And I love that, because it's quite clever. It's a difficult letter to alliterate with. Mm. Uh, Eric? 
Yeah, I was just enjoying the bottomless pit of liberality and the abyss of liberality. And sort of, please forgive me and give me back my black stuff. I cannot walk. Yeah, it just, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Uh, whereby I have justly plucked the old house or rather the main beam of your indignation. I mean, this is lovely. It's so wonderfully overwrought that uh, it's, it's really nicely done. Sarah. Yes, and my two favourites. Oh, weathercock of wretchedness that I am, seated on the maypole of misfortune. And also, hereafter my breasts shall be marble when they warble. That that really made me laugh. I it, There's just so many kind of singular gems in here. I wonder if there would be way, a way that you could pull them all out and like, uh, make one speech out of them. <laughs> like I, one I, short speech. <laughs> I, I I definitely think we could cull material from it. I mm. I I, I um, you know and it, it, digging into the Latin, it might you might be able to produce something that is more performable as well. Um, you know, for a modern audience, I think it's a very small audience that would get the Latin jokes. Um, and getting them all in one room at the same time would be very very hard. Um, but you know, there's there's definitely something there that's 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 really interesting. That that's quite fun. Um, I mean, without those bits at the end. This is a nice half of a show, basically. It's it, it's it's definitely something we could do as part of one of our live shows recording for the podcast. It absolutely would work that way, and it's really nicely silly. And I I, I, I have to say, I just plucked this out of the ether. Um, you know, I had no knowledge of it particularly. I, it was just on my list of to-do things, um, looking for something Christmassy. Um, and I think we found that in spades, actually. Um, silly as it is, um, it actually, I think, would work very well, um, even for modern audience, actually. Just a few minor adjustments, uh, tweak a few bits here and there, maybe add a few additional modern jokes to replace some of the ones that we understand there's a joke here, but it's referencing something that we don't get. Um, uh, otherwise, it's time for final thoughts, actually, to go around the room. So I'll go to Bryony first. Um, Anything you were going to say, plus any final thoughts? Yeah, I think it, the comedy just holds up really well. You wouldn't need to do that much at all with it. The the one moment where it got a little bit weak for me was the, the awful die jokes. But I mean, we've we've read some plays where that's the height of, of how funny they get. With this, it was you know it was that was the the low point, and it was brief, and it was still you could you could probably get a laugh out of those exact words without having to change them if you really really tried. But yeah, it's. What, what a lovely piece, and it lived up to its name of being a merriment. Mm. Uh, Emma, uh, any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think the amount we're all laughing, me included, is just a testament to the fact of how well it works and how funny it is. Um, it's just a very strong collection of kind of two and three handers that work so well. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to, to go further with this. And yeah, because it is written for a certain time and a certain place and a certain audience, there is that scope to kind of make it your own a bit more, make it make some kind of references or jokes or edit some of the jokes so that it's um, more tailored to, to when it is being performed. Um, yeah, there's also a lot of scope for great characterization and costumes. You know, you've got a character who is a river, so that, you know, things like that. So I think that'd be really fun as well. Yeah, weirdly, this is one where I'm sitting. Hey, we could throw some money at this one actually, and it would actually be well spent because it, it it needs a bit of panache, doesn't it? Because it is a panto, basically. It's just a very short panto. Um, uh, you know, maybe throw a, f a few additional songs in. I don't think I'd make it a whole show. I think it's still going to be a forty-five minute, fifty thing. Um, but you know, double bill with something else. Uh, we've got a few other short ones I quite like. So, um, yeah, options. Alan, any final thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I must admit, I was beginning to lose the will to live a bit with the post-show pontificating stuff. Yeah, I uh, labelled it I as pontification was, for a reason. It, you know, it, it was there for a probably good reason at the time, but I don't think it's uh, weathered well. No. Uh, but the, the main show itself struck me as, as fine. And... Uh, I must admit, I didn't have the adverse reaction to the dying jokes because that's just the sort of puns I enjoy anyway. Mm. Um, and as I say, an awful lot of it does feel very modern in terms of the wordplay hu humour in it. You know, I can I can easily see, you know, links of that through to 19th, 20th century material. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Eric, any final thoughts? 
Yeah, it was fun. It was uh, <laughs> just trying to read it as a, you know, with a straight face, like going sort of, my face more fair than was the hair, the head of Gorgon. My hair, yes, blah, blah. Um, it was, I'm sure that even if you did this like to academics who actually know all these references, um, or even non-academics, they would, you know, do it with panache. Um, they would totally just pull over. But the, th the the point is they have to, you know, you, you have to get the references in order to understand that it's not a compliment to say all this. Yeah, the, the, but a lot of the classical references are relatively, you know, l low level stuff. I mean, it's like the, the, the uh, 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 as, as faithful as Helen. Um, it was, it was a, you know, a gag that I think will land for a lot of people, whereas some of the more obscure ones won't. I mean, I think people will get the Gorgon one. Um, some people might not immediately get, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, what are Cupid's eyes to those of thine? You know, they're going, they might have to take a moment to go, oh, no, Cupid's blind. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, right, with you. Uh, you know, there, there, there's some, um, and there are more obscure ones in there. But I think there are enough gags to, to hold a lot of those ones together. Sarah, any final thoughts? Well, it was just a hoot, wasn't it? Um, what you were saying about it um, being a bit like a panto, uh, the nymph that I had, that I was speaking at the beginning, uh, Liriope, was it? Whatever she was called. She had a line when when they were waiting for the prophet and then he came in. I'll see if I can find it. She had a line where it was basically... The early modern version of he's behind you um so yeah and as i said it I, I immediately thought oh yeah you could totally you could totally turn this into a pantomime mm. um oh yeah here we go see husband see oh see where bl prophet blind in twice good time is coming here behind i mean you know you oh, could... no, uh, look isn't. one way i can't yes, see him. exactly look the other way. yeah yeah I think this would work really well with a modern audience. It's an absolute scream. I really enjoyed it. And um, I mean, with some of the more obscure classical references, you could perhaps you could perhaps swap them for modern jokes, you mm. know. And, or uh, just add more in. I mean, or just add more thing. in, yes. Yeah. Your face is as orange as Trump's or whatever. You know, you could put a few things in for a modern audience that would, that would tickle their tonsils but um uh, yeah i just think it's hilarious and uh, I, I i think we should do a version of this most definitely okay um, um yeah i mean it's 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 very panto there's a couple of moments where it goes a bit 1980s panto or maybe 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 pull back from one or two of those jokes um where it's uh, not 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 quite uh landing but uh most of this has survived incredibly well it has to be said so yeah that's uh that's a thumbs up from everyone on the silliness counter this is rating very very high so all that remains is to thank all these wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading yeah thank you very much everyone and uh, goodbye right. whose ledge of teeth is far more bright than jetties whose lips are too too good for any lettuce <laughs>